Hi kids, it's Mr. Larry again with another story. The name of this story is Gopher to the Rescue, a volcano recovery story. Uh-oh, I see the volcano in the background. Look out, Gopher. So this book is by Terry Katasus Jennings, and the illustrator is Lori O'Keefe. Take a good look at all the pictures. They're really fine. Okay, here we go. Something is different on the mountain. Snowshoe hare hears the rumble from miles away. Black bear feels the ground shake beneath her paws. Goofer feels the earth move in his burrow. Mm. Oh, something's happening. Look at that mountain. Steam and ash burst from the top of a mountain. It looks like smoke. Elk has never seen this before. Squirrel sees black smudges on the snowy mountain. The rumblings go on for days. The mountain is changing. A volcano is waking up. But Gopher just digs and digs in his burrow. Early one morning, oh my gosh, look up there at that mountain, oh boy. Early one morning, the animals feel rumbling and trembling and shaking, more terrible than they've ever felt before. They hear a terrible sound. The top of the mountain slides away. Snow and rock slide down the mountain and into the valley, and then the mountain explodes. The blast from the explosion blows down all the trees. The top of the mountain disappears in a cloud of ash and rock. The volcano is erupting. The animals try to run away. Uh-oh, oh, look at that. The heat, ash, or the force of the explosion kills many animals. Oh, but Gopher is safe in his burrow with plenty of tasty roots and bulbs to eat. Oh my. When the shaking stops and the roar quiets, Gopher begins to dig again. He digs through soil, and then he digs through gritty, warm ash, sand, and pebbles. He wonders, where did all this stuff come from? When he reaches the surface, blown down trees cover the landscape like toothpicks. The world is gray and dry and hot. Gopher is not alone. Ant and beetle crawl around on the crust formed by the hot, dry ash. They find plenty of food in the dead wood and plenty of places to hide. From his home under a rotten log, Mouse sticks out his nose. He's confused, but the tree is still home and he has tasty bugs to eat. Yum, yum. Even though his world has changed, Gopher digs and digs. He mixes the soil from his tunnels with the crusty ash, adding life-giving nutrients. Oop, got to stop and talk for a minute. Okay, he's not mixing the ash into the dirt on purpose. It just happens, but it's good that it happens, and we'll find out. Well, it adds life-giving nutrients. You know what nutrients are? That's the good stuff in food that makes us healthy, and it's the good stuff in the ashes that mix in with the soil and make plants grow better. So that's what it says here too. The nutrients help plants to grow. Gopher helps the mountain recover. Good for you, Gopher, nice work.
whether you know it or not. Salamander and toad polywogs. Polywog, that's like a little tadpole, of course. Salamander and toad polywogs survive the blast under the ice and in the mud at the bottom of a lake. Come summer, when it's time for them to live their adult life on dry land, they find the world dry and hot. They use gopher's tunnels to find shade and to get around in a hot, dry landscape. They head to the cool, damp forest nearby or to new ponds that were created in the blast area. And look, if you look in the dirt on that cutaway picture there, you can see the seeds are beginning to grow and come into little green plants. Insects return to the mountain right away, flying in on the wind. Spiders float in on silken threads. They do that, you know, spiders can float on those little silken threads that they spin. Okay, and seeds blow in from near and far. Days turn into weeks and weeks turn into months. Some seeds take root on top of gophers tunnels and grow into plants. There they are. Birds also visit the mountain right away and eat tasty bugs and seeds. Mm. They perch on small islands of plants and flowers that survived the blast. Weeks pass, months pass, but there are no places to nest. Birds can't live on the mountain, not yet. Oh, but they're pretty. Look, they come there for food. Elk often explores the mountain. At first, he finds young trees that survived the blast under the snow. As months turn into years, saplings sprout from seeds. Saplings are little baby trees. They're a little snack. They're not enough for him. He needs to take cover in shady forests nearby. The forests that were not damaged by the heat or the rocks or buried under the ash. He'll return to live on the mountain when there's plenty of food to eat and plenty of places to rest and hide. Months and years pass. Slowly, hemlocks, firs, fireweed, and lupin grow. Animals visit. When they find enough food and shelter, they can stay on the mountain. Gopher still digs and digs, looking for new roots and bulbs to eat and making the ground fertile for more seeds to grow. <laughs> Pretty flowers. Years have turned into decades, lots of years. Trees and bushes dot the landscape. Elk, squirrels, snowshoe hares, <clears throat> Excuse me. And black bears are returning to the fertile new habitat on the mountain. Some areas may never be as they were before the big blast, but one thing we can be sure of Gopher will still dig and dig. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and the mountain will continue to change. Yes. <coughs> Makes me cough. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, here's more stuff. You can come back to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can come back to this and read it when you want to. Read it with somebody else if you want to. Ask questions. Talk about it. Interesting stuff here. Well, take good care. See you next time. Bye-bye.